Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. The former chairman of the Nevada Gaming Control Board, A.G. Burnett, for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. From your house to the White House, the folks at D&D Roofing can get it fixed with their eyes closed. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Safety is the number one priority for the trucking industry. Over $7 billion a year is spent on technology, like this electronic eye, that will apply the brakes automatically. But the most important factor for safety is the truck driver. These hardworking men and women who safely move over 70% of our nation's freight and 94% of Nevada's. We thank you because trucks move America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're delighted to welcome back to the program A.G. Burnett. He is the former chairman of the Nevada Gaming Control Board. Pleasure to have you here, sir. Hi, Sam. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Always a pleasure. Um, let's start out with when. $55 million fine between Nevada and Massachusetts. Massachusetts um, coming up with a larger number. Was that appropriate in your opinion? The number both? that Massachusetts came yeah. up with? Well, in my opinion, both uh, regulatory jurisdictions did what they had to do. Um, we have seen regulatory actions against the company in both cases. Um, I believe Mr. Wynn um, still may be something that they need to look to, at least in the case of Nevada. Um, but in both cases, uh, the agencies did thorough investigations. Um, they left no stone unturned. Um, Nevada dealt with uh, the company. In, in the way you just described, and Massachusetts did as well, because Massachusetts was a little bit different in that I believe the licensure was still pending for the property there. So they had to get yes. through not only the licensing process, but also whatever disciplinary action they took. Um, is Macau still going to be a player in this uh, looking at, at when? Um, because we've not heard anything, to my knowledge, from Macau at this point. I, uh, it, like you, I have not heard anything from Macau at this point. However, as you're aware, the concessions are coming up. Yeah, 2022. Um, 2022, the three licensees will be looked at again, uh, theoretically, in whatever fashion the, the Macanese authorities are going to do that. So I would imagine, if we haven't heard anything right now, I, my guess is that they will add that if it is an issue to their investigation going forward for that relicensure process. Um, do you see, um, because we've talked about this before, um, that even though you can sell all your shares and be totally out of the company, you're not sure. off the hook as far sure. as the gaming commissions are concerned. Um, do you see anything following up on Steve Wynn personally at this point beyond civil suits? I don't know. Um, and that remains up to, the, up to the regulators. And the ones that I'm most familiar with are in Nevada. Um, again, I think in Massachusetts, um, uh, Mr. Wynn is dealt with and done and out of that system, to my knowledge, at least my understanding um, from here in Nevada is. However, you're right. You're, you're absolutely correct. In Nevada, when you have a gaming license, 
um, you can't just walk in and surrender that license. Um, generally speaking, the regulators in Nevada um, will not accept that surrender unless and until the Gaming Control Board and Gaming Commission are satisfied that you can go ahead and surrender. Now, I don't know what Mr. Wynn has done, if he's even attempted that. However, I would believe, I would argue he's still a licensee in Nevada, and that's good for the regulators because if they wish to take action against him, they have him in the system. He's within the jurisdiction of the regulators at this point. Um, were you surprised that Matt Maddox, the CEO, was fined a half million dollars by Massachusetts uh, personally, but then the company actually ended up paying that fine? Um, there's a couple issues there, and no, I'm not surprised by that. I think that as the CEO, um, they looked at him for moving forward after the allegations were made known to the world by the Wall Street Journal, what, January-ish of 2018, um, and they, the regulators in Massachusetts wanted to send a message. Um, the fine, um, was probably more specifically tailored towards uh, Mr. Maddox's role in the company during the time period where Steve was still the CEO and running the company. Um, but the fact that the company paid that fine I don't think is necessarily out of character. Um, and they th should theoretically indemnify him for any activity that took since he technically is an employee. Um, but it's an interesting question because I'd have to look at what the Massachusetts uh, Commission wanted specifically. Now, if they wanted him to pay the fine individually, that's a different story. Okay, um, let's take a look at uh, Caesars, okay. um, which is a fascinating story for especially people in northern Nevada that were familiar with Bill Hara and how that sure. company started and eventually uh, morphed into Caesars Entertainment. Uh, Carl Icahn controls about 18% of the company, mm -hmm. has said that uh, this company should be taken apart <coughs> and the pieces sold off. Um, and Eldorado Resorts that started off as the El Dorado back in the 70s in Reno with mm -hmm. one property mm -hmm. um, is mentioned in almost every single deal. Sure. And uh, my understanding is that they are doing due diligence with the potential of buying a big chunk of that corporation. Your thoughts mm -hmm. on that? Mm -hmm. Well, my thoughts are that if the, r the rumors are true and let's say something does occur um, between El Dorado and Caesars, um, first and foremost, I think it's great for Northern Nevada. I think it's great for Reno. It's a great story for the Corano family, Amazing. for the El Dorado folks. Um, they certainly have been on this um, upward swing in terms of acquiring properties. And I think that the track record that they have of doing so um, is a successful one. They are showing a really good ability at buying properties, um, streamlining operations. They have a model for gaming operations that is proven to be su successful elsewhere. They did Isle of Capri. Um, they're in New Jersey. Um, the company is, I think, as the rumors indicate, probably the best potential candidate, the best stocking horse for an acquisition of this nature. Um, they would have to do a lot of divesting uh, to make this work, correct? Potentially. Um, it's, it's, that's an interesting question. It's an interesting analysis because um, I there are antitrust laws that companies have to walk themselves through on any merger and acquisition. And of course, we saw heavy uh, antitrust analyses back years ago um, when we saw the mergers and acquisitions between MGM Mandalay and Harris Caesar, some pretty big combined companies. Um, here, there, there are some, some interesting things to think of. Um, there's no antitrust issue in Las Vegas because uh, El Dorado potentially, if in a theoretical transaction, doesn't have our presence. And as you've read, I, uh, I think that a lot of the prognosticators are indicating that's why it's a good move for a company like El Dorado to continue to grow, to get into the strip, where Caesars has how many properties? Seven, eight, nine properties? On the strip, yeah. On the strip. Um, there may be some jurisdictions where there are multiple um, locations in such a hypothetical transaction, and maybe there would be some other potential sales that occur throughout that. Well, for example, but like Reno, um, they, have, they would have mm -hmm. Harris Reno, mm -hmm. so they would control the four biggest properties in downtown beyond the mm -hmm. three that they currently have. Mm -hmm. Up at Lake Tahoe, they already own Mount Blue. Lake Tahoe. So yeah. they would, there would be Harvey's and Harris up sure. at the lake. So, I mean, you know, one can look at those conflicts. Sure. Um, and you'd have to determine if there are conflicts. 
there may not be. That's one of the interesting things that we learned in those previous acquisitions years ago, that antitrust analyses don't necessarily lend themselves perfectly to a gaming acquisition. Um, if we're talking about a coffee company like Starbucks, for example, acquiring all of the all of its main competitors, say say Starbucks merged uh, with and acquired Dunkin' Donuts, um, the FTC is going to take a serious look into that. And the main reason they do that is for consumer protection. They want to know if a, a post-acquisition monopolist or near monopolist might be able to increase prices of coffee um, such that you and I or coming out of pocket more right. than we should. Um, can a potential monopolist abuse the consumer? Um, that's the role of the FTC in these, in these mergers and acquisitions. With gaming, it's different. Um, you can talk strictly gaming, where you look at a gaming device, a slot machine. What can a monopolist do with a slot machine? There's arguments sort of both ways on that. You're also talking about entertainment companies, restaurants, hotel rooms, um, entertainment. Um, what could someone who has acquired a lot of properties do that might be detri detrimental to the consumer? And at the end of the day, in those previous acquisitions, we learned not really a lot. So it's, it's an interesting analysis, though, to look at. Uh, it, it certainly is. Let's take yeah. a break. More with sure. A.T. Burnett when we come back. Tamarack Junction is South Reno's hotspot with over 450 of the latest slots and video games. Sully Sports Bar, the Dining Car Restaurant, William Hill Sportsbook, and the Tamarack Steakhouse and Lounge. We're just north of the Summit Mall in South Virginia. Yeah. Because of UMC, I'm putting my free time to good use. Because of UMC, she keeps me on my toes. Because of UMC and this guy, I'm here. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? Not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. The Tamarack Junction Steakhouse is known for signature steaks, handcrafted cocktails, and world-class wines. Join us Thursdays and Friday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 in the Steakhouse Lounge for live music, gourmet plates, and well-priced wines just north of the Summit Mall on South Virginia. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with A.G. Burnett. He's the former chairman of the Nevada Gaming Control Board. Um, one, one last thing on this uh, Caesars potential mm -hmm. sell-off. When Phil Ruffin bought Treasure Island from mm -hmm. MGM, when they were in desperate uh, shape at sure. that time, and they needed the money, I think it was around $750 million that he paid for Treasure Island, mm -hmm. got a $20 million discount for cash. Yeah. I mean, they, they were hurting badly at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but the one thing that he made sure was that he kept... Um, their room reservation system connected mm -hmm. to his property for two years. Sure. So I'm thinking that if somebody wanted to take, for example, the Rio or any of the other properties, that that would have to be something that they would want to uh, have in there because the Total Rewards program is yeah. such a huge and beneficial product to Caesars. Yeah, well, I think that's a good idea. Um, certainly, the Total Rewards program is one of Caesars' greatest assets by far. And we're seeing those rewards programs become greater and greater in terms of benefits to gaming companies as we move forward. 
Yeah, and my old friend Scott Volo put together a similar program for MGM, mm -hmm. which has also become an incredibly mm -hmm. successful yeah. product for them. Yeah. All right, let's talk about marijuana lounges. That was one of okay. the things that came out of this legislative session. Never been to one. Uh, me neither. <laughs> um, but um, you know, you were at the forefront as as Game Control Chairman of yeah. telling people that you know you cannot be associated with marijuana if you are right. going to have a license. You know, federal rules apply right. here as well. Um, but here in the state of Nevada, we it is legal to buy marijuana. It is mm -hmm. legal to consume marijuana, just not anywhere but your house. Yeah. Um, but we know, maybe you don't know, but we know that people are smoking marijuana in the back alley, around the corner, sure. yeah. in a nightclub, no, I know. What, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, I was being facetious. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I hear about it all the time. Yeah, so consumption yeah. lounges make sense. Tig Segerbloom mm -hmm. went to San Francisco with a, with a group and went around to these various consumption mm -hmm. lounges there, came back, said, if they're making it work, we can make it work. Las Vegas went ahead and, and licensed a consumption lounge. The legislature and the governor in particular put up all these blockades and now there's a two-year yeah. moratorium on this. Mm -hmm. Do you think that makes any sense? A two-year moratorium? Yeah. Well, I mean, I in effect, because they, they, they're they going to take between now and the next session to examine the situation and then yeah. make a decision. Yeah. And Las Vegas is now going to uh, not be able to open that consumption lounge. Well, I, I don't know much about the moratorium. From a political standpoint, having been through some politics myself, I would imagine a moratorium is a good way of killing something. Um, especially when you have uh, legislative sessions that last or, or that only take place every two years. Uh, the world moves faster than two years, certainly. Um, and in this regard, what's going on, as you just described it, is going to continue to go on, um, especially in Las Vegas and in the, on the Strip. Um, and I do hear from people all the time um, that it is somewhat uh, ubiquitous, uh, the use of marijuana outside in public. Um, as for the rest of it, uh, the federal law is unchanged. It's still a, a Schedule I controlled substance. Um, that has not changed to my knowledge. No. Um, CBD, I believe, has been bumped down, uh, I think, to Schedule Three, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but the, the, the fine line that the Nevada Gaming Control Board and Gaming Commission still have to walk is the fact that you've got nearly 3,000 people and entities with gaming licensees in Nevada right now as we sit here. And each and every one of them still has to comply with federal law whether it's an individual who might be someone of wealth and means, such as yourself, who might be <laughs> leasing out space that Don't they may own a secrets, strip mall. Huh? <laughs> they, may, they may own property that has commercial tenants that some of those may wish to be, th 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 may be uh, medical marijuana or recreational marijuana. And if you have a gaming license and you receive money from one of those tenants, which is cash, um, and can only be cash right now, theoretically, um, are there money laundering implications with you receiving that money, converting it over into your bank account, for example? I did see that there was some movement um, regarding the use of cash or potentially some movement regarding banks in Nevada right. on the use of cash. But if what I read is correct, the thought is, is maybe we'll put that into cryptocurrencies which are digital right. currencies such as Bitcoin. Um, they're utilized on the blockchain. Um, they are um, theoretically easily traceable and trackable, but still Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies aren't regulated. So I don't know if that would give anyone on the regulatory side much comfort. Um, d w was there a big difference for you um, with a thousand feet difference versus 1500 feet difference in terms of uh, a casino versus a dispensary? Or a lounge, I should say. Um, as a regulator, mm -hmm. um, yes, I think there was. Um, I think as we watched those rules be laid out, um, obviously for us, the further away the better as regulators. Um, because when you look back, um, our job was initially related to medicinal, which didn't have those types of requirements. And then when the voter referendum took place regarding recreational, it was a whole new world for us. So we had to have eyes on everything. And we just wanted to make sure that what was touching, theoretically touching the gaming space, would still remain compliant with federal law. I've said on this program before that once marijuana is legal federally, that the nicest consumption lounges on the planet will be in hotel <laughs> casinos in Las Vegas, and they will be right opposite the $100 a plate buffet. Could be, <laughs> could be. <laughs> Let's take a break. You're smarter more. man than I am. <laughs> Let's take a break. More <laughs> with A.G. Burnett when we come back. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Come visit Design Outdoor's store and backyard 
to see our wide selection of fire pits, barbecues, and pizza ovens, natural stone water features, and fountains, and frost-proof pottery. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. One of the most psychologically damaging things parents can do to children in divorce is disparage one another, which is why I can't believe I even have to make this commercial. Half of your kids' genetics come from this person you're spewing hate about. Your children have the right to love you both, but more than that, they deserve to love themselves. Marilyn York might be a men's rights divorce attorney, but this is for every selfish parent. Shut up! Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at REMAX Realty Affiliates. And a lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at REMAX Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with A.G. Burnett. He's the former chairman of the Nevada Gaming Control Board. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, in terms of political plays, the Nevada Independent put out a list yesterday of contributions uh, to the governor's race. And one of the highest donations was uh, the company, the Morello Group, that uh, controls Grand Sierra in mm -hmm. Reno and yeah. SLS mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. Um, and I, I've talked on this program, just based on what they did in Reno, mm -hmm. that I don't think Vegas realizes that these people are players. They are not mm -hmm. going to just come in and do something ordinary and go away. Mm -hmm. um, and this donation seemed like, from a political side, that they were the same way. Wh what do you think about this group? Um, well, I remember when we licensed Alex Muruello. I remember his background and history. Uh, I was impressed with him. Um, I was impressed with how he was successful in Southern California. Um, I've been in the property. I think they've done some nice changes. So um, the, that's new to me, the, the political contribution, so I don't have much comment on that. But I, I think that they are running a, a good ship. Uh, they're at that location and, and, and they're doing well. And that's where all the growth is heading, especially with the expansion of the convention center. And then they'll get a, um, a line on the monorail. Sure. So a lot of benefits to that. And there's so much <coughs> that, that they can do with that property. Oh, uh, yeah. It has such a large footprint uh, that with some CapEx um, in the right places or, or further CapEx in other places, it can really be kind of a, uh, an entertainment destination. I think. Oh, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, a couple other topics. I want to hit on. <coughs> um, Grant Govertston, who writes for uh, Union Gaming, mm -hmm. did an analysis on Macau mm -hmm. and um, said that basically Macau is going to be overbuilt as far as gaming properties go, mm -hmm. and it's going to be difficult for these companies to make as much money as they were making you know, previously. Do you have concerns about overbuilding in Macau for our Nevada gaming companies? He's an expert, not me, but I probably would tend to disagree, and, and here's why. A um, couple thoughts there. I, I think Macau's growth is dependent upon um, several things. First off, l let me rephrase that. I don't know that there needs to be more growth in Macau. Theoretically, there could be. That's up to the operators there and the government. Um, however, Macau's success is largely, if not nearly wholly dependent upon the mainland. Um, so the, the couple of thoughts that I have there are continued growth on the mainland, um, continued uh, ability of mainlanders to travel to Macau, which necessitates a good relationship between the operators and Beijing, theoretically, at the end of the day. We've all heard about in the past how sometimes uh, visa restrictions get tightened a little bit if there's some uh, discontent with uh, the operators in Macau. I haven't heard of that happening in several years. Um, but, uh, and I've said this publicly before, aside from political instability, 
facility on the mainland, um, which there appears to not be, uh, nor will there be. Xi Jinping was just essentially self-nominated right. uh, and approved by the Politburo as leader for life. Um, he just released, I think it was a 30 or 50 year plan for the mainland. Um, there's stability there. Um, if there's disease, um, if there is some kind of uh, uh, natural disaster that occurs, those are the only things that are ever going to stop Macau. Um, well, you don't look at Vietnam, Cambodia, um, no. these other countries? Are I look at Japan as a potential. Obviously, All right, so, so Japan, maybe that's your next topic. Okay, so right? yeah, we've got about a minute to go here. Okay. Um, so yes, Japan. At yeah. this point, um, Las Vegas Sands would love it, MGM would love it, sure. um, Everybody. Caesars would love it, although yeah. I think it's going to be interesting to see how that plays in terms of what's going on with the corporation. Um, do you have you know, a, a, a top two for who could get that license? I don't because there's so many American operators and Nevada operators that I think would be able to go into that country and be successful. Um, you have to partner with a local entity um, and there are a lot of, of, of companies that are really pushing hard to get in but as far as, as the numbers and the way that the Japanese government intends on regulating at least at this early stage it appears that they're going to do it very carefully. Um, the Japanese are very well organized. Uh, I myself met with them right. four or five times when I was chairman of the Gaming Control Board. They sent multiple delegations to Nevada and other jurisdictions to learn how to regulate, um, how to handle gaming. Um, they'll do it the right way. They'll just uh, uh, need to select the locations. Osaka, Tokyo prefectures are the most popular and uh, pick the best ones in their eyes that should enter into that market. And that's where we have to leave it. Okay. Come back soon because I've got like a hundred more questions here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Always a pleasure, sir. It's Thank a pleasure. you. Yeah. And we'll be right Thanks. back. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Ah! Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they will. St. Ives Florist, for every holiday and every special occasion. For romance, custom home design. We have the largest selection of fresh flowers in Northern Nevada. And we also offer a large selection of unique gift items. Come see me, Lori Ann, at St. Ives Florist, 700 South Wells Avenue, or call me at 333-9190. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Don't forget another way of watching Nevada Newsmakers is to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Nevada Newsmakers, on YouTube. We'll see you on the next broadcast.